What evil things lurk in the dark? Oh, it's the shadow pancakes. Hey everyone, welcome to BTD. My name's Mark. Today we're talking about dark mantles and cloakers, or as my players like to call them, shadow pancakes. So I grouped these two together because they're very different in terms of CR rating, difficulty level. So dark mantles are much easier to kill than cloakers, but they have a lot of similar abilities and I think they can be used somewhat similarly. So I think a lot of ideas that I have on their usage are going to be somewhat similar. So I think the first thing that jumps out to me about where these things exist and how they exist within their environment is that they both have a very strong element of camouflage. So to me, that suggests two things. One, that they're not going to attack unless they think they have an advantage or they are otherwise prompted to do so. You know, the players might be in some cavern and they might walk right past a cloaker who doesn't necessarily want to engage with them. Cloakers in particular are intelligent, they can speak, so they have a language that they use to communicate with one another. So if they don't want to fight, it's not going to be a fight on sight, especially when they realize that, oh, the players aren't going to see me if I don't move. But this same element makes them wonderful ambush creatures or trap creatures. So I think unless your party is relatively low level, it's going to be hard to make an entire encounter out of dark mantles. But dark mantles can be a very excellent prelude to another attack. They can be the initial ambush that puts the players at a disadvantage before the real attack. And it does mention in the monster manual that dark mantles can be trained. So it mentions, I think, creatures in the Shadowfell uh, usually train them to act as guardians. So if you enter the antechamber of some palace in the Shadowfell of some demon or something along those lines, that there might be dark mantles that fall upon your face, create an area of darkness, and then just latch onto you, making it harder for you to do anything. And then that's when the real attack will come when you're at your weakest and most discombobulated. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in the shadow fell, but I think in a lot of underground or darkened locations, uh, they can be used in a similar manner, not necessarily as minions, but as the first wave of something darker and worse. And cloakers are this ramped up to 11 because they are an absolute nightmare of things that make them hard to see, to hit, and to eventually kill. So they have a few different abilities that I think individually aren't necessarily unique among monsters in the monster manual, but all of them in combination definitely makes them a unique creature. The first is their camouflage ability, which we already talked about. The second is their ability to create false images of themselves to make it very hard to hit them. And you might be attacking and hitting, but you're just knocking away these false images and not actually doing any damage to the cloaker. And lastly, the damage transfer ability that it has is one that makes a lot of groups nervous. So if a cloaker decides to attack and then it latches on to one particular character, now the rest of the party wants to be attacking that cloaker, but as soon as they realize that it's transferring some of the damage to the character that it's latched onto, they have to think twice about how they're actually going to deal with it. Because in killing the cloaker, they might be killing their friend. Now the cloaker isn't the only creature that has each of these abilities, but I think it's the only one that has all three of them in combination. So it makes it very shifty, very dangerous, and very different from a lot of creatures that you can throw at your players um, in an encounter. And I think it's one that can make them a little bit nervous once they realize just how difficult it is to take one out. And I almost forgot about its moan, so it can screech, and if the players fail their saving throw, they are frightened of the cloaker. So this exacerbates all the problems we just talked about already and just makes it a very fearsome opponent. So I can't really see other types of creatures training or domesticating cloakers in the same way that they might dark mantles, but their effectiveness in combat 
and their effectiveness in your campaign or your adventure is going to be somewhat similar. But again, I think it's all of the things that make Dark Mantles dangerous just ramped up to 11. So every time I've used either one of these monsters in combat, um, I feel like it's gone pretty well. It's had the intended effect and I wouldn't hesitate to use either again. Now, I don't think it's something that I would throw at my players too often. There aren't going to be societies of cloakers or dark mantles that they have to uh, take down, but I think as either a random encounter or an environmental encounter that you plan out a little bit in advance in certain settings, or as a trap monster, especially in the case of the dark mantles, I think that there's a lot of different ways that they can provide a really memorable encounter without necessarily being a plot related encounter. So I wouldn't hesitate to use them again. And uh, let me know down in the comments, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you like dark mantles? Do you like cloakers or not and why? I would love to hear it. And until the next video, take care.